Hey, good morning. Let's go over today's trade plan. So in the overnight session, we saw that the market rejected that balance area high volume node around 1923 and shot up to the 32 to 34 resistance that we've had from uh, the last few days. And at this point, that resistance has been tested a couple of times. So we could see a break even above this 32 to 34 resistance. That would bring the 37.75 to 40.75 initial resistance zone into play above the pre-market resistance that is the primary upside objective um, overall there aren't any econ reports out today so you know given that there's no major catalyst for a really extended move higher we could see responsive sellers enter the market either at the initial resistance zone or at 44 to 46 and uh, this 44 to 46 zone has potential to cap the upside because that would be quite an extended move up and uh, at that point ES would be quite stretched into a major resistance area and that can then result in some rejection and a move lower back down towards the 37.75 to 40.75 and potentially down to 32 to 34 and um, then the market can simply balance within a range. In the event of a failure at 32 to 34 we have pre-market support, 26 half to 28 half. Uh, this is an aggressive spot for buyers to step in. And uh, the idea is that if the market is truly strong, then we should not really even pull back to 26 half to 28 half and that the market can simply continue heading higher right from here and then test the initial resistance zone and then possibly put in a pullback. Um, now, if we test initial resistance and then come back down, to 26 half to 28 half at that point it would be a good zone to buy because you know ES would be short term exhausted down into this zone so that would be a better time to uh, you know trade that zone on the long side if we reject uh, 32 to 34 and then we pull back to the pre-market support zone then it requires more of a real time read and uh, you know the trade location is still pretty decent uh, 26 half to 28 half is a a good support zone if the day is still going to be strong and the internals are still strong and uh, you know overall the day is still shaping up to be a directional upside day you know then that zone can actually shut off the downside and then ES can actually push to a new high on the day but uh, you know if we're seeing some stronger rejection if we're getting some wide range bars on the downside if internals are really tanking and it seems like we could go to gap fill uh, then, you know, we're going to have to be careful at this uh, 26 half to 28 half zone. And uh, in that case, just be patient and wait for 23 to 25, um, which is a better spot and a uh, pretty important inflection point in the market where, you know, again, if this market is truly strong, we should not even really head down there. But, um, you know, the market could just balance between initial support and initial resistance today because there isn't any... Uh, you know, major catalyst to drive the market uh, big one way or the other. So, you know, the main idea on the day time frame is that we will actually hold above pre-market support, break pre-market resistance, go up and test the initial resistance zone. Um, you know, depending on how, how the momentum and volume is shaping up in real time, there's potential for the market to go up to 44 to 46, but the high odds objective is this 3775 to 4075 area um, sellers can be active here so it does call for some caution for buyers and it makes sense to take profit at initial resistance if you are able to get long the market early in the session and uh, you know at some decent location then over here it does make sense to uh, take profit and depending on how the zone gets approached uh, you know there could be a short setup at that zone but uh, we just have to be cautious there just because, uh, you know, the buy side is in firm control here. We've seen the market uh, basically just, you know, heading in one direction. And in order to fade the market, um, you know, we have to see some signs in real time that indicate that this could be a short-term top, at least on the day time frame. And, uh, you know, for shorting, the 44 to 46 area offers a high probability of the market actually topping out there short-term and then putting in a pullback. Um, initial resistance does have that potential that the market could actually shut off there and then 
start balancing. But uh, you know, because the overnight session has already kind of consolidated this uh, you know short-term upside move, uh, that's the only reason that we want to be cautious uh, shorting 37.75 to 40.75. Um, you know, if the market had gone up there in a straight line, it would have been a better short setup, and um, you know, it would be a higher odd spot where the market could actually stop and turn around. But because you know the market has had time to digest this uh, short-term upside move, you know we just have to be a bit careful on the short side. Um, does make sense to take profit there, but in order to short it, you do have to see something in real time to justify that trade. So those are the main ideas heading into the open. Buyers are in firm control, so any pullbacks in the support are going to be decent long setups. We're going to be cautious on the short side unless the market gets really extended into 44 to 46 then you know at that point we could consider shorting the market for a pullback back down towards the uh, 37.75 to 40.75 so those are our main thoughts let's see how well the buy side holds up this morning and take it from there